you're watching the Western Athletic Conference. It's here on ESPN. It's the start of a four game home stretch for the ACU Wildcats. Return home to Moody Coliseum. Today they face their friends from the east, the UT Arlington Mavericks. Welcome to Abilene Christian University and inside Moody Coliseum. Andy Penny alongside Chris Jarrett. It was a tough road stretch for the Wildcats of ACU. They lost their last three all on the road. A chance to maybe hit the reset button here today and get back in the WAC standings, but make no mistake, maybe the hottest team in the WAC, at least over the last 10 days, UT Arlington is here today. Well, they've just been so efficient when you look at how they're scoring the basketball and the numbers that they're putting up. This is a really good Mavericks team that's got them in that top five in the WAC standings. So a tough opponent for the Wildcats to come home and face in this matchup. And then when you look at the standings here too, top four teams in the WAC have not lost more than three games inside their home barns this season. So for Abilene Christian to try and turn that one and five mark around have got to start today. And with the four game homestand upcoming, you look at who they're playing in that homestand as well. After today, based on these rankings right here, the sixth ranked team in the WAC and the 11th ranked team in the WAC when you've got Southern Utah coming in in just a few weeks. So really important home games for the Wildcats. Andy, let's set the stage with the impact players in this matchup for Shamar Wilson for UTA. Transferring in two seasons ago from Phoenix, but he's made all the difference in this season's campaign. Nine games this year for Wilson with 10 rebounds or more. His six double-doubles in the WAC have our best in any individual player. And then what he was able to do in their first matchup. These two teams have played before back on November 29, 13 points, 11 boards, was his third straight double-double at the time. And then Ali Dibba for the Wildcats. He's been the team's leading scorer, Andy, in seven of their last eight. They really drive through him. Three straight 20-point games for him towards the end of December and into January. They're really going to drive with Dibba today. They'll need Dibba with a thin bench. We'll tell you about that here in just a moment. But first, let's go courtside. The third member of our broadcast crew today, it's Trey Newhouse. Hey, Trey. Thanks, guys. These two teams are very familiar with each other because they played each other very recently. On November 29th, the Wildcats took a trip out to Arlington as they were beat by the Mavericks, 86-71. In that game, Shamar Wilson had a 13-point, 11-board double-double, and Hunter Jack Madden for the Wildcats had 19 points. With this new whack double round robin schedule type, the Wildcats went to Arlington to start conference play, and now the Mavericks have to return the favor and come play in Moody Coliseum. Back to you guys. Thank you, Trey. Boy, that game feels like forever ago, November 29th. Almost two months ago, the opening game of WAC conference play. Of course, the two teams stepped out of conference, but they are full throttle now. It is WAC basketball on a Saturday in Abilene. Wilson, Betty all in the center circle. We are underway. UTA, the Mavericks, they win the tip. They'll move from left to right in our vantage points in the road black uniforms. Williams, Gordon, Vining, Talbot, and Wilson, the starting five for the visiting Mavericks. Three-point shot already up and good. Makaya Williams, that's what the Mavericks love to do, had 15 of those on Thursday versus UTRGV. It's a that's team, a Andy, that they're just shooting it so well from the field, and that's what we're going to note all night long is efficiency for this Mavs offense. Betty All, McLean, Madden, Simmons, and Diva, the starting five for the Wildcats. Simmons short on the first shot. Each of these teams averaging 74 and a half a game. But UTA has been on a hot streak. Winners of their last three, averaging 84 and a half per contest. Hunter Jack Madden from deep. His 32nd three of the year, we're tied at three. And Andy, if Hunter Jack Madden can be a threat for the Wildcats outside, he's trying to get back to that mark where he was in the preseason. He was so strong from beyond the arc. McLean the steal, deep ahead of the defense. Free throws coming for the Wildcats who love defense, you'll see a lot of it today. Here's KT Turner, his first year for the Mavericks, hired there in March, March 17th of 2023. He's been a long time assistant, most recently with John Calipari at Kentucky, but also, as you can see, stops at Oklahoma, Texas, on the staff at Texas when ACU beat the Longhorns in the NCAA tournament. Also at SMU as well. Deep at the line, the leading score for the Wildcats. 15.2 a game for the junior out of Stockholm, Sweden. The transfer from Chicago State. Again, this the second meeting between the Mavericks and the Wildcats this year, and the first time for either team to play a conference opponent for the second time. 
Mavericks the better of the Wildcats, as Trey showed you a moment ago, 86-71. Good start at the line for the Wildcats. And that's where ACU is going to want to be effective as well, is if they can try to get the Mavericks in foul trouble. They've had to deal with rising fouls with the pace of play that UTA runs at. And Dibba with the size, they're going to try to get him downhill a lot and try and crash and get to the strike. The 2-3 zone look for the Wildcats, a three on the right side. Talbot off the back rim, but a second chance opportunity. Mavericks lead the WAC in three-pointers made, 163 on the year. Here's the ball off the foot, it's a turnover. Defensive-minded Brett Tanner, that's yeah. where he's been in his third season as the Wildcats head man. And they hang the sign right under the student section of turnovers forced. That's the mindset, that's the mentality, that's the discipleship of Brett Tanner is trying to create havoc on defense. Madden down the baseline, a handoff to Betty All, and Leo's got his first two today. Leo just two points on Thursday versus Tarleton. That's stopped a seven game consecutive streak in double figures. He'll have to play big, a little thin on the inside for the Wildcats today. Cam Steele not in the lineup. Big mismatch inside, Andy. It's right here with Wilson McLean. Wilson, the spin move, it rolls out on him, gets his own. Hands all over the place, whistle, and I believe a foul call here on Deba. And um, it is. I'm surprised that Wilson brought that down to try and get a dribble off right here, but it's just good chemistry inside. Great penetration by Hunter Jack Madden. Already a three knockdown and able to get some penetration, a little assist inside, impacting the Wildcats scoring early. Aiden Igiehan, the 6'10 senior, first time on the floor. Again, the Wildcats a little thin on the inside. Cam Steele not in the lineup today due to sickness. Three in the right corner, up and good. Akili Vining. In 15 threes on Thursday versus RGV, the WAC leader in three points made. 163, they shoot it at a 34.5% clip. Betty All, the baby hook on the baseline. And there's Betty All, we're in the first matchup. Just did not have the impacts against the Mavs. Again, back on that first matchup. His usage has really increased and Brett Tanner using Betty Ohm a lot more on the inside. Gordon works with Madden. Shot off the front rim, no good. Well, I love the energy, love the pace here in the first three. Kavion McLean will drive, jump stop, shot from 10, back iron. And one and done as Gordon has the board. And in the wins for UTA, they've done a great job on the glass. It's a big focus today. A lot of contact. The officials let him play through. Vining finishes at the rim. An early five points for Akili Vining. Averages eight and a half on the year already with five. You'll take that 1v1 every time. Just lowered his shoulder and got to the rim. Igiehan e. coming off his best game of the year. 11 points versus Tarleton. McLean has his first two. Jump shot from the right elbow. You're seeing that the three-point shot is not where McLean wants to be effective, but the ball fake is what bought him that off-balance defense and a second look much closer to the rim, and he knocks it down. ACU four out of six from the field to start. <laughs> Again, a lot of contact at the rim. No foul call. Wilson had the board, lost it out of his hands. Deba a chance to run, two on two. And a foul on the Wildcats offensive end. Timeout on the floor, catch your breath. We're in for a good day of basketball. Wildcats, an early three-point lead. Up and down pace here at Moody Coliseum, and a good crowd on hand as well. They see an early three-point lead. Hey, Chris, let's look at this afternoon's keys to the game. Yeah, and the key starting first with UT Arlington is to get to the free throw line. They do a great job of getting to the stripe in the games they've won. Avoid foul trouble. It's been an issue. ACU create chaos. They've already done a great job of that. Four UTA turnovers to the Wildcats. One, and then share the rock. They're going to need the depth and spread out the scoring if they want to be able to try and hang deep in the second half. Wildcats lead the whack in turnover margin, almost plus three per contest. And we've already seen an array of defensive looks. We'll see full court pressure again out of the Diva makes. Four for four at the line. It's a good start. Talbot in the front court. 
Philip Russell on the floor for the first time, and you'll hear that name a lot today. He has been impressive in his short tenure on the floor in a Mavericks uniform. Made his debut December 16th. The multi-year transfer was given eligibility by the NCAA. Did not have to sit out the mandatory time with the multiple transfer rules. And he has been all sorts of impressive. He has it in the corners for shot today. So three off the front of the rim. UTA is not going to turn over the Wildcats much today. They only average 12 defensive turnovers a game. They play sound defense and rebound. Turnaround shot for Simmons, too strong. Thought maybe a little more patience there for Simmons. A good idea to turn in front the rim, but got a quick shot up. Thought he'd go to work there a little bit with the positioning he had. Williams on the right side. A foul, I believe, away from the basketball down on the inside. Aiden, Aiden Igieha as his first. You've been watching, too, away from the play. It's been very physical in the paint so far to start. Might see that get covered a little bit more on the increased physicality as the game goes on. But it's definitely going to be a battle inside the paint. We're going to see a lot of protection of the painted area by ACU and battle for positioning. Sterling Gaston Chapman, number 23, is on the floor for the first time for the Mavericks. Betty all a quick breather right back in. JV Seat is on the court for ACU, the 6'3 sophomore, where's number zero. There's a drive, a shot left short again by Williams. The ball finds its way into the hands of JV Seat. This is a Mavericks team, 9-9 nine and nine on the year, but have not won on the road this year. They're 0-8 in true road games. Heard KT Turner as a turnover here gives it back to the Wildcats. But I heard Coach KT Turner talk about, well, what's the difference? What can you do differently on the road to try to get wins? And he said, hey, maybe the, the gyms are different, the rims look different, but we can always play defense. Defense doesn't look different on the road, so we have to start on the defensive mm. end and then make shots when we can. It's been a tough road schedule, excuse me there, Chris. It's been a tough road schedule. Lost at number three, Arizona. Lost at number 21, Texas. They've already made their trip to Phoenix to play Grand Canyon. Had the lead versus the Lopes with a minute to go, but then lost at the end. As Simmons gets to the rim and finishes. That's such a good take from Simmons. Out high, kind of faked on a three-point shot, and then is able to take it all the way to the rim. You see the size of Arion Simmons, but then that right there is what he's capable of doing. Russell step back three, no good. It's one on one. Diva and Russell. Diva to the rack. Left it short. Whistle and a foul here on JVC. Trailing the play, fighting for a rebound. But check out Arion Simmons again. Going to work. Good footwork to get to the rim. Yeah, and again, just a good little screen by Betiol inside with the positioning he had. Leaves Wilson no opportunity to try to step in and offer help. It's a play that just finds itself, but well executed. Mavericks again at 74 and a half points a game, but over this three game winning streak that they're on, averaging 84 and a half. Shooting 47% from the field. They're cool to start today at three for 10. Make that four for 11. Nice left handed shot by Wilson. And just great post work, too, with Betty All, the body that Betty All's got. You'll see. ACU rotate a lot of different bodies tasked with going at him today. Betty all right back at Wilson. The hook too strong this time. Wilson again leads the wax six double doubles. And Betty all the contact and the foul. Betty all's first. Team foul number five already here in the first half. Madden, a short breather back in. Nasir DeGru, the sophomore, in at the point guard spot. He wears number 10. First time we've seen him today. It's an ACU team, Andy, that's been tasked with trying to replace someone like Manny Allen that's got so much experience on this team. Douglas blocked by Iggy Ahan. Madden left all alone right wing. He's got it. Two for two from deep for Hunter Jack. It's a good start. The same spot where he drilled number one earlier in the first half, right around the same neighborhood. 
And if he can get in a catch and shoot rhythm, he's going to be very tough to defend. Missed a walk there. Gaston Chapman now to Russell. It's a good matchup here. Between the legs, crossover dribble. Diva trying to stay with him. Russell left alone on the baseline, 15 footer short. Talbot an offensive rebound, new shot clock. Douglas pulls from deep. And out of bounds, last touch by the Mavericks. The officials letting them play. And not a shock, yeah, not a shock that we're getting guys going at each other and matching the intensity that they're getting from each team. And you know, what we talked about, Andy, coming into this game is how both these teams are looking at this as a must win. You want to win every game, sure, but ACU not happy with the one and five conference mark that they've got. They've played in so many 10 point or less outcomes this season so far. For UTA, Grand Canyon coming to the home barn the next time that they take the home floor. So a game that they want to get a lot right on. Simmons top of the key. Wildcats three for three from three. It's a double-digit lead, eight minutes deep. DeGruy contact on Russell. And a foul out on the front court. It's a 6-0 run for the Wildcats. 12-2 run over the last four and a half minutes. Wildcats, 11-point lead. WAC Vegas is back. The best fans, championship basketball, all in exciting Las Vegas. Join us March 13th through the 16th at the Orleans Arena for the 2024 Hercules Tires WAC Basketball Tournament. Don't miss the crowning of a men's and women's champion. For more information, go to waxsports.com slash WACVegas. Welcome home, Wildcats. Moody Coliseum, the longtime home of ACU basketball, is back. Look at that gem. Offense here in the early going, five turnovers already, and then Aiden Igiehan, the block, leads to the Hunter Jack Madden three point shot. And Hunter Jack Madden just in transition, a little lost there, but you could see right towards the end of that, floating up towards a three point line and wide open. I mean, it's definitely a guy that you got to try to key in on, but that's a tough assignment. When you're coming into this game, you're looking at an ACU team, Andy, averaging just 34% from three. And Hunter Jack Madden has a lot to do with that. They've tried getting him back in that groove where he was earlier in the season. And the Wildcats, a perfect three for three start. UTA out of the shoot is four of 14 from the field. Two of those are from deep, two of six from behind the three. They dug an early hole, they've got some work to do. Gordon will try to get him out of it on the drive. They'll say Simmons got a touch out of bounds. 12 on the shot clock. Seeing great D out on the perimeter is UT Arlington. The Mavs trying to do a good amount of work to try to get the Wildcats off balance so they can drive with the ball fakes. But closeouts, very important for both teams in the matchup. Russell trying to get going. The leading score at 16 and a half a game. Three left it short. Mavericks win the battle up on the rim. And I believe Gordon able to get the credit for the bucket. UTA a little intensity out of the timeout and a turnover here on the Wildcats. And Gordon, too, on the miss. Just you saw the Mavs as a unit crash the rim. As soon as the shot went up, about three different bodies, and Gordon was the tall hand that prevailed, was able to get there and just get the right touch to get that go down. But great rim presence on a miss to get a second chance bucket. 
Russell runs the show, his seventh game in a Maverick uniform. Three at the top of the key, Douglas a little too strong. One and done for the Wildcats. That's where ACU has to be strong as well today. Last in the conference in rebound margin. Iggy Ahan, not his primary shot to turn around from the free throw line. No shot selection, both teams there on their last touches. Not ideal, would like to see a little bit more of a better ball movement type possession. on the shot clock, a look for Gordon, left side, short again. Maverick's been short on a lot of their three-point balls thus far. Simmons, another three, it's a wow. perfect start, it continues. Four for four for deep for the Wildcats. Between Simmons and Madden, a perfect red-hot start from beyond the arc. Mavs now the last two touches, what you'd call a power play, where someone ACU defensively is out of position and no points. Russell trying Boy. to draw contact, still gets it up and in. Yeah, he sure did get contact there, but the ability to finish, sometimes you just don't get the call. That's why they tell you to keep playing through. Heat check. First miss from deep. Not a bad look. No, and with how Hunter Jack Madden is as a shooter and how the team's been shooting it, you're fine with that. Maybe not fine with that. <laughs> Russell on the other end, too strong. Quality minutes again from Iggy Ahon. A season high 25 minutes on Thursday. Cam Steele's absent with the sickness. Cam Steele not in uniform again today. So quality minutes there. Ariane Simmons from deep. It's a tough matchup here because, of course, you know, we're talking a lot about ball fakes, and we've seen Simmons put it on the floor and crash into the rim. So you're just not sure what he's going to do because with the size he's got and how big of a player he is, he's in his range in a lot of different spots on the floor. So it's a tough matchup. Madden off the inbounds play, misses from 12. Little hesitation there. If he would have just caught maybe a dribble and a quick shot. Williams misses. Diva ahead of the defense with Russell. Step through, <laughs> blocks, goaltending call. Diva again on a run. Wilson was chasing Golden Nicole. And, and with Diva, you know you've got Wilson right behind you. Your job there is to get it off the glass as quickly as you can, Andy. Try to not give it any life and loft it up into the air. Diva does exactly that and gets a bounce off the backboard before Wilson can get there. The largest lead here in the first half here at 12. Amazing. Gordon gets in and scores two more. Had the had the pressure from two Wildcat defenders and is able to keep it alive and finish. Madden to answer, and he will. Hunter Jack, Madden. Hunter Jack has eight, Simmons with eight, Diva has six. Back to the 12 point spread. Gordon averaging 17 over the last four games, 11 on the year. This shot by Wilson up no good. But free throws coming for the Mavericks, their first two of the afternoon. Yeah, just the ability to get the final touch on that, the shot to get off from Gordon there is incredible. So saw, the, saw the last time down, Andy, of what Wilson gets him to the strike, is he's able to put it on the floor and cover so much ground with the athlete that he is. Betty all down inside, trying to bang underneath on the block. And just, again, the ability to put it on the floor, spin, and get in a better position, it's a really tough assignment. And you see why the leader in double-doubles, the ability to clean up the glass and finish underneath. One of those six whack leading double-doubles was against ACU back in November. 13 points, 11 rebounds, and that Maverick 15-point win. One for two at the strike. UTA will extend some defense into the backcourt. DeGruy loses the handle and touches it last. It's a turnover. Turnover number four here in the first half. And just couldn't settle it down. Had the opportunity to try to get it right to the elbow to Maneke, who was there waiting for it. And that's the penetration on that soft zone where you're able to penetrate the defense. But 
Again, DeGruy unable to get that firm hand on the ball. Russell body check. KV on McLean will pick up the foul. It's bonus the rest of the half. Team foul number eight. And Philip Russell on his way to the line. And that's a long time for UTA to be in the bonus against Seattle where they trailed at the half. They go on to win 80 to 75. Andy, they shot seven for nine in the first half, 16 for 23 in the second half and outscored Seattle 46-39 second half. It's, it's this right here, the ability to get to the strike and where they're gonna be for the next eight and change. Russell's 83% from the line. He's there the back side. Again, the transfer from Southeast Missouri. Ohio Valley Conference first team last year. Made his WAC debut with UTA December 16th versus Air Force. Put up 28 here in the WAC Newcomer of the Week. It's a good way to get started. Back to single digits here, a nine point game uh -oh. and another Wildcat turnover. Williams works with McLean. Now Russell, entry pass, Wilson. Talbot a three. Two for 11 start from deep for the Mavericks. And possession will go with the Wildcats. Beautiful day in Abilene. A little chilly, but not too bad. Things are heating up here at the Moody Coliseum. ACU a nine point lead. ACU a nine point lead here inside Moody Coliseum. Great crowd on hand. Welcome back students who came back for the spring semester here this week. Chris, it's really been the three-point shooting for UTA, really the difference. They're only two of 11, ACU's four out of five. Yeah, and we noticed too, just uh, the lack of rhythm for the Mavs on the offensive side, only two assists as a team on seven shots to go in from the field. So not really getting as much ball movement and, and buckets off of ball movement. And the five turnovers too, ACU pacing the Mavs with points off turnovers, 11 to two. Rebounds even at 12 apiece, points in the paint even at 10 apiece. Diva has it poked away, gets it back. Euro step, and another foul, Diva back to the line. This is when Ollie's at his best, is on the drive, on the attack. And free throws five and six already coming for Ollie here in the first half. You, and we noted too, and you're seeing why he's been able to lead the Wildcats in terms of points scored. Seven of the last eight games is the size he has, the athleticism. The coaching staff for ACU and Brett Tanner saying that they're really trying to get him to, to be that threat in the conference where he can get downhill and open things up for these other guys as well. Second in the whack and field goal percentage that tells you the type of shot selection he's making. Six for six at the line, he has eight. Balance today, Madden, Simmons, and Diva all with eight here in the first half. Mm. Full court pressure again. Mavericks able to break. Talbot with the dribble. Gordon works on Iggy Ahad. Step through, <laughs> reverse blocked by Diva. Good support defense underneath by the Wildcats here. Little ball movement to get Iggy Ahan off balance. But Diva does a great job there, Andy. Doesn't get his body involved in the play. Just gets a deflection of the basketball and uh, avoids a foul. ACU last in the whack and block shots, but two big ones today, Iggy Ahan and now Diva. Russell had McLean off his feet on the shot fake. Little contact, but no whistle. McLean right side, works through the trees, mm. whistle and contact. It's only team foul number five on the Mavericks, so no free throws yet. Foul on Talbot, his first. Ball poked out of the hands. Gordon ahead of the defense. Simmons will <laughs> chase and block it. Big time hustle play in transition. Get the fans off their feet. Madden in the paint finds Iggy Ahan. And out of bounds. 
Check out Arion, defensive transition. Third block today for the Wildcats. And the officials want to come together and take a look at something here, or at least have a conversation. And have it all situated, UTA will get possession. Mavericks 0 for their last four, one for their last seven. Seven for 26. 27%. Williams again on the attack. Gordon will square up a three and he puts it in. Splash. That, that is what hopefully gets the Mavs going. Again, off of a pass and just too much space to knock down a much needed three for this team. Gordon with seven here in the first half to lead the way. Simmons, reverse, too strong. Had a chance to be a highlight real play. No kidding. Fell off the glass. And just like that, the Mavs can get back within six or five with a triple. Talbot, he'll try to do it. Too strong, whistle. And a foul here, I believe, on Williams. McLean had him blocked out. Good look here by Dejuan Gordon. And Simmons just a, a half beat too late on that closeout. He's there, but again, expecting a lot of blow bys, and that's what this uh, core of guards for the Mavs has been able to do, is get ball fakes, get the bigs that are out from their comfortable area, off balance and get inside. And so Simmons thinking that just a half second too late on a closeout. Playing a scene, Betty all lost it. Gets it back, 10 on the shot clock. Madden a drive. Diva a three. Got it! Well, he looks smooth today. Just too much space. Williams, a lot of space where Diva wants to try to get downhill, get inside. And a foul on the floor. Free throws coming here for the Mavericks. Hunter Jack Madden trying to Really flip the script, get a charge call. Let's go courtside, Trey Newhouse. Hey, Trey. Thanks, guys. As we get deeper into conference play, every single game has conference playoffs and championship implications. This UTA team was sitting in seventh place before their last game against UTRGV, just one spot out of the conference tournament. With their win, it moved them into fourth and securely into the playoffs. With 13 conference games remaining in the season, both of these teams will undoubtedly look to have a push for the WAC championship. Thanks, guys. Back to you. Hey, thanks, Trey. Yeah, the WAC seeding. Fred Tanner's not a huge fan of the WAC seeding. He said it's all about standings anyway. Top eight in the standings will be in Las Vegas, then reseeded based on the resume. AC just trying to get back in the conversation. Up by nine here in this first half. We talked about, too, just with UTA, the recent win that puts them above 500 in conference play. But going on the road, always tough. And the top teams in the conference, and it's pretty much a normalcy across every conference, is the teams that can protect the home gym. That's what the Wildcats trying to do today. Here's a pickpocket, Gordon, two on two. He'll work with JVC. Step through, shot up too strong. It'll stay with the Mavericks. I believe an official review. We're about to have one on the far side. I think they just turned it. Oh, and check that. Not, yeah. an, not an official review. They just overturned the call. It's Wildcat basketball. This feels like a critical four and a half Very. minutes for ACU. It's been a good first half. They played with the lead. Well, in UTA, too, can they dwindle a nine-point deficit? Russell partially deflected that McLean shot. That will keep possession with the home team. And for, for the Mavs, Andy, going to have to 
try and clean up the turnovers, which they've done. They've really limited the turnovers, but it's it's the rhythm from the field where shots just have not gone down off of ball movement. 10 on the shot clock for JVC. Five on the clock. JV with the left hand. JVC. It's a good penetration and drive. Had his best game of the year in Arlington back in November. Nine points in 19 minutes. It's first two today. Denying Wilson getting that first touch. Wilson works on Betty All. Entry pass from Binding, stole by Betty All. Great defense the entire time. It was a battle with Betty All and Wilson on positioning. The first time that same look off the steal, they denied, and then right there it leads to a turnover. Leo now goes to work with Wilson. Short off the glass. Extra pass to Russell. Contact and a foul here. Yanni Rivera, who's on the floor for the first time, picks up the foul. Ali Diva from deep. Wildcats still on top by double digits, 35-24. needs more light bringers and courageous leaders who inspire us, game changers and risk takers who never play small, creative thinkers and God seekers who uplift us. You see, the future is ours to create. We hold it in our hearts. We mold it with our hands. We light the fire within. Coliseum Wildcats holding on to that 11 point lead. They've led by as many as 13 here in this first half. They lead by 11 currently. Hey, coming up at half, you can see Daisy Stride, Matthew, and De La Cruz. They're upstairs, got a great view of the court. They'll also have a great perspective on the first half as well. Coming up at the half, Daisy Stride, Matthew, and De La Cruz here from Moody Coliseum. Been a matter of shooting here in the first half. It continues that way. Perfect from the line. Five of six from three for the Wildcats. And, and the small things, too, we're noticing. Points off fast breaks. ACU seven to UTA's none. Points off turnovers. The Wildcats continue to be in the favor in that column with 11 to the Mavs, two. But five for six from three is uh, definitely been the difference. ACU's been able to get some help from beyond the arc. See if Philip Russell can get the Mavericks going. That's point number five. Just one of seven from the field for Russell. 0 for 4 from deep. 24 points versus RGV on Thursday. Double figures, five of the six games he's played. It's a two-point guard look here for Brad Tanner. It's DeGruy and McLean both on the floor. Betty All, Simmons, and Deba out there with him. Simmons, strong to the rim. <laughs> I don't even know I if mean, he saw the rim on that shot, but he finds the center of it. He's got that feel of how much is needed in terms of English, and I don't know how I don't know how that shot goes down, but it does for Arion Simmons. That's a that's a brow raiser of a finish right there. He's got ten. Williams out to Wilson, three from the top of the key. Shamar Wilson has only made three three-pointers all season, but he rattles this one home. Just his second shot to go down from the field, but the rebounds continue to battle with five. 
trying to get him yep. more touches, but ACU locking it down inside. Diva trying to answer. Front run, no good. Betty all has the board. Foul on the floor. Yeah, check out these acrobatics here this afternoon, Ariel oh, Simmons. <laughs> that was crazy. I mean, and you, it's tough to see there, but from our perspective, it did not look like his eyes are on the rim when he lets that go. So that was. Let's just say you and I probably have an H in a game of horse <laughs> if we're playing area on and horse on that play. I'm not knocking that down. Battle of Wilson and Betty all continuing inside. And Gordon fouled. Free throws coming. And check out Arion one more time on the no look shot we're going to call. Uh, he tried to get that left eye over, but again, even if he's looking at the rim or not, with Wilson right on his doorstep, all the more impressive to get that to go. Dejawan Gordon, the transfer from New Mexico State. He's also spent time at Missouri, Kansas State as well. And now for the Wildcats, number 22, Amy Gayon. 11.1 points per game. He's been in double figures 11 times this year. 16 versus ACU, the first matchup. Two minutes left in the first half. Double team on Simmons. He slips through it. Igiehan, offensive rebound. Lost it out of his hands as he went up. Simmons a third try. He got it. No, fell out again. Oh, my goodness. Home rim unkind on that trip. Well, I thought two or three of those were going to go down. But Boy, these are the ones that turn your hair gray with how many close looks. I mean, that one just doesn't go. This one was a little offline off the start. Simmons takes one good dribble, and then how this one doesn't go. He's touching every inch of the rim. And now they take a timeout to talk this over. But fortunate that you do get a bounce where you've got possession and, and don't have maybe four looks and you get no points. Again, this is the first of four consecutive home games for the Wildcats. It's been a tough stretch on the road. The last three were on the road at Grand Canyon, at California Baptist, Thursday at Tarleton. But again, back home for the first of four today. And for Brett Tanner at one and five at conference. This is, as you mentioned earlier, a critical two weeks of basketball, four games of basketball. Correct, yeah, and they're not happy. I mean, it's it's going to have to start today. This was a game that started conference play way back in November, and they know that you, know, you look at the box score, they weren't thrilled with the play that they had, but, uh, you know, the, the, the takeaway was everybody's rolling it out. It's conference-wide. Everyone's starting conference play early, but we were talking about it. Tarleton tucked in here as, as the third best team in the conference standings coming into today. But there are some teams for ACU and their perspective where they can try and get a favorable home game and get some wins back in the conference column. Simmons to a cutting degree off his hand. Chance to run for the Mavs. It's binding. Gives to Wilson. And Wilson finishes. That's why you want bodies running to the rim. A little oblong bounce. And the Mavs able to get a big time bucket. Wilson leads the Mavs with eight points. Simmons long on the three, rattles out. 0 for their last five of the Wildcats. Russell left that one short. Foul here on the Mavs, will walk the floor, two free throws. I believe. Check that call on number 11, Dwayne Caroma. First time on the floor in his first foul. Caroma was the guy that when they've been without Philip Russell, who's carrying a majority of the starts, but boy, they've been happy with kind of a surprise from the NCAA where all of those multiple transfer undergrads were cleared. And again, just a big time addition in terms of strong guard play on this Mavs team. He's made an immediate difference. But Aaron Cash not playing today for the Mavs. Yet to mention that concussion protocol, second game in a row that Cash has missed. 
Simmons just the 60% free throw shooter, but that's a good trip. Two for two. Seems have he's got good touch today with he's shooting 40% from the field and knocked down a, a pair of triples. He just missed the one. Under a minute here in the first half. AC's played with the lead the entire first half. Nice finish, Makai Williams. He's got seven. He was able to get to a good spot where DeGru was there, had the two hands up and made him hit it, and he knocked it down. About a 15 second difference here, game clock, shot clock. Wildcats had a chance for a two for one possession, but decided to play this one out. Iggy Ahan, top of the key. And now shot clock is off. Mavericks will get the last look. A chance to get within four or maybe three. Last possession of the first half. Steal by Diva. Binding lets him go with two fouls, and Diva finishes. That is a huge momentum shift in the last 10 seconds. And the Wildcats will take an eight-point lead to the break. Ali Diva, the finish at the rim. Points in transition. It's ACU 41, UT Arlington 33. Wildcats shoot 44% in the first half, five of eight from deep, eight of nine at the free throw line. Brett Tanner's making his way over to Trey Newhouse for a halftime interview. Trey, it's all yours. Hey, Coach, what did you see from that team in the first half? Well, I saw a lot of energy and enthusiasm, man. We played with some spirit, and that's something we've been lacking, and, and we've got to find a way to do that for another 20 minutes. Not real happy with how we finished, you know. Uh, it's got to be a next man up mentality. When, when guys go to the bench getting fouled, you know, the other guys got to step up, and defensively we weren't quite as good. Great half from Arion Simmons. What did you see from him? Well, he's just playing loose, you know. He's, he's playing with some confidence, and he's got to keep that up. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Trey. Thank you, Coach Tanner. At the half, Wildcats 41, Mavericks 33. Daisy Stride, Matthew Dela Cruz, they're coming up here at the half. Whack basketball, it's here on ESPN Plus. Welcome you upstairs in Moody Coliseum. I'm Daisy Strine alongside Matthew De La Cruz. We just saw a very exciting first half of this game here in Moody Coliseum. And Matthew, these teams battled it out last November. ACU lost by 15, but they showed up here in Moody Coliseum ready for revenge. Yeah, ACU came out strong and they came out firing in this first half, shooting 71% from the three-point line. And they started with their foot on the gas, and they haven't looked back, forcing five turnovers, three blocks. Great first half from ACU, but UTA has battled in it and found success, keeping it within eight points. ACU, what a great job. Yes, as we take a look at some first half stats here, the Mavericks came out struggling to score against ACU. They were playing a high pressure defense, came out very fast paced, allowing for a lot of turnovers in ACU's favor. Matthew, tell us some keys to the game for the second half. Yeah, for, U, for UTA, for the Mavericks, some keys to success moving forward is picking up the pressure on defense, forcing high pressure situations, getting ACU into some bad shots, and then number two, take advantage of ACU's aggressive play in the passing lanes, make some backdoor cuts, get some easy buckets. They've had success in that in the past. And then finally, get Philip Russell involved, UTA's leading scorer. So far, he only has six points, and that once UTA can get them involved, they can find rhythm from the three-point line offensively in their shooting percentages. And then for ACU, continue to work the inside out, find some threes. They had success in that, getting UTA off balance defensively. Number two, foul less. ACU racked up 12 fouls in that first half. And then, again, continue to force turnovers for ACU. They had five forced turnovers in the first half. Look for them to continue that strong pacing here moving down the stretch. That's right, Matthew. It was obvious ACU came to play today in Moody Coliseum. Let's take a look at some halftime stats. For UTA, uh, Shamir Wilson, eight points starting off strong, three for four from the field, four for four from the free throw line. And then for ACU, Hunter Jack Madden has found success from beyond the arc, two for three from the three-point line, and eight points so far. Arion Simmons looked to 
look for HU to continue to get him involved down low. He's nearing a double-double, so this will be an exciting second half for both of these squads. That's right, Matthew. And the crowd is definitely a factor here in Moody Coliseum. It is electric. There's lots of fans here to support the Wildcats and the Mavericks. So we're excited to wrap up this second half here with ACTV on ESPN+. Plus. Forty-one, thirty-three, Wildcats at eight-point lead. As we get ready to start the second half. ACU led the entire way there in half number one. So we welcome you back inside Moody Coliseum. Andy Pitty alongside Chris Jarrett. Really, it's a matter of shooting the basketball. UTA just four of fourteen from three. That's been their bread and butter here as of late. Their three-game winning streak. Not there in the first half. ACU shooting well, two in double figures. Arion Simmons and Hunter Jack Madden. I think Arion Simmons has been the big bright spot for the Wildcats. Great to see when he can add from the perimeter. That's always a great sign because we've seen what he can do inside as well. Good news for the Mavs is of those four threes, they've come from four different shooters. So they're at least got guys that are knocking down shots and able to spread the wealth a little bit. But Hunter Jack Madden finding that stroke from outside, three for five. Really efficient from the field. Abilene Christian, 63% from beyond the arc and 44 from the field. So just numbers that trend in the right direction. But Andy, we've known this, this Wildcat team has had leads at half. The stress is closing out and playing 40 full minutes. They're going to be tasked with trying to do that and continue to see if they can hold an eight point lead and be efficient down the stretch. I said Hunter Jack Madden in double figures. It's actually Ali Deba who has double figure numbers. 13 for Ali, 12 for Arion, eight there for Hunter Jack in the first half. Nobody for UT Arlington in double figures as of yet. They have had five players in double figures in each of their last two games. Now granted, we still have 20 minutes to go, but nobody there yet. Wilson has eight, Gordon has seven, Williams has seven, Russell six points, but just one for eight in the field for Philip Russell. Five points for Bining, Bining had some early foul trouble, so did not play much in that first half, but did have five points for the Mavericks. So some work to be done here for UTA, and Coach Turner will tell you it has to start on the defensive end. Yeah, and that's what I think Abilene Christian's done a, a really solid job of is the turnovers that they've been able to force and being told from our Stat department that Abilene Christian only twice this year in the wins, they've out-rebounded their opponent. And they're looking good in, in the plus side, 23 to 20 in that category, at least in the first half. So ACU will move left to right here in the second half. The Mavericks the opposite way. Starting five on the floor to start for Brett Tanner here in the second 20 minutes. Simmons works strong on the left baseline, but the shot strong as well. ACR built an early double-digit lead. It's gone back and forth between single and double as Bining finishes here at the glass. But this really about the closest that the Mavericks have been here at this six-point stretch. Had a chance to get within three right before the half, but a turnover and a finish by Deba made it an eight-point halftime lead. That's not the shot you want if you're Brett Tanner, the underneath scoop shot by Madden. Falls out. Can UTA get back in? Again, winless on the road this year. They're 0-8. Talbot a drive down the baseline. Into the corner, Williams. Diva another chance to run on the outlet pass. Betty all a finish. Offensive rebound and a putback. The plus side of running the floor and You'll see that Dibba, even against numbers, he trusts himself to try to get to the rim, but the trailing Betty All able to come in and scoop it up, a little cleanup duty. Leo now with six this afternoon. Gordon works on Simmons into the paint. Nice underneath pass. Wilson will finish. What's a great look. They're able to draw the help away, and that's what you that's what you see right there with Wilson is, is how quick he was able to get it and get it off the window and down. He's got 10, four or five from the field. Betty all double team needs some help. Works through it, missed the shot. Shot clock resets. 
A good reset here with kind of a forced look inside. Betty all goes to work again. He'll draw the foul on Gordon. Betty all at six foot eight. Gordon at six foot five. Leo go to the line. Here's the possession before as Leo gets the offensive put, put back. And just Betty all doing a great job with Talbot was right there to scoop up the rebound, but size of Betty all able to come in and get his hands on it. And then now back here, the other trip down the floor gets to the charity strike. There's Leo from Italy. Red shirted in 21-22. Brett Tanner talked about last year, 22-23, brought him along slowly. He had a chance to play some more minutes, but Brett Tanner wanted to make sure he was ready. And he is definitely ready. As he has become the primary presence from the five position. Seven point spread. And travel call here on Gordon. Turnover number eight. Seeing a much heavier presence for the Mavs trying to get their guards inside, but just a little bit of a shuffle of the feet there. And likely seeing UTA just not having as much faith in the outside shot. Get the guards downhill and get inside. Try and get some calls and get to the stripe, but we haven't seen it as much. And uncontested down the baseline. He's in double figures now, the third Wildcat to get there. He's got 10. Pass deflected into the hands of Iggy Ahan comes in to give some help with the size of Wilson inside. And you notice it was Iggy Ahan right there on Wilson. And Betty all a little bit of a help. So they're really keying in on not allowing Wilson have his impact. And another foul on the inside. Betty all and Wilson fighting for position. You'll see Hunter Jack again. Just down the baseline, nobody picks him up. Foul again on Wilson, just his first. A little frustration on the call, but his first. Bodies on the floor, whistling a jump ball. This should go the way of the Mavericks. And it does. Not much of a break for Arion Simmons, who checks out for essentially just the defensive trip down and back. And now it's Betty All on the bench, getting a fresh breath. Williams works the point. One on one with Diva. Binding attacks. Wilson there again, missed the putback. Can't miss those. Just uncontested. Well, and the initial downhill shot attempt is to get Wilson the opportunity to clean up the second chance there. Yehan doubled, needs some help. And Wilson knows it too, still frustrated. That, that's, a, that's a make that needs to go down and instead just a couple inches offline. Seven on the shot clock. McLean will penetrate, find Steva. Whistle a foul, chance for a three wow. point play because that's goaltending on the Mavericks. Big swing for the Wildcats inside. You see Wilson on the far end and that's the threat of Diva is the size he has. He's hanging down there with the bigs and he's the option on the baseline. Gets a nice bounce pass and able to finish, or a chance at least, at a three-point play. Foul goes on Williams, the goaltend on Wilson. Deep at the line for an and one. And he makes the three for three. Deba will pick up a foul. Check out this replay. Low angle replay of that last bucket. And this actually the miss by Wilson. Hey, look out. <laughs> and an offensive foul call here on Williams. Hunter Jack Madden just continues to be a force just turning the tides of a game again just able to get in there gets an offensive foul call and flip things the other way that's what he wants to do is he's your guy that can knock down the perimeter shots and draw a charge draw an offensive foul turn the momentum Williams his third he and Gordon both with three personals 
Drew Outland pass and nobody home. Timeout on the floor. ACU has stretched the lead back to a double digit. 49-37 lead, 15-52 to go. It's a 6-0 run for the Wildcats to stretch this back out to a 12-point game. UTA with three turnovers in the last two and a half minutes. Andy Penny alongside Chris Jarrett. Chris, we were talking in the break. We don't think UTA's been within about six for no. well, probably 20 minutes of game time now. They'll still keep firing. It's been dim from deep, but a nice second chance opportunity to finish. The Keeley Vining. Vining's got nine. Mavericks back within 10. It's the eighth offensive board for UTA in the game today so far. Madden needs some help. He'll find Betty All. Spin move. Leo missed it. DeGruy taps it back up and in. That's just standing and watching defensively. Yep. You get a contested shot by Betty All, but nobody on the back side. DeGruy takes advantage. His first two. Russell tries to get it to Gordon. It's a turnover. This is not the guy with how physical UTA plays inside. They can't think that just a little slip inside and nobody finding a body. That's the easiest way for DeGruy to hop on the stat sheet. His first bucket to go down. Andy Evelyn Christian leads points off turnovers, points in the paint, and fast break points. But second chance opportunity is where UTA has been able to farm and, and get good chances. We mentioned the eight offensive boards but now nine points on second chance opportunities. We're talking about them fluttering around and working it in and out of a single digit margin. That's been one of the things to keep them close. Here's a steal, Williams. Open floor, layup, block, and a bounds. Simmons, the turnover, but makes up for it with a block. And, and this all starts with KB on McLean. It's gonna start all the way down here, but watch McLean knife inside and force the opportunity to come from way outside the paint, and that allows Simmons to give him some time to load up and, and now swap I'm, that into the sideline. I believe, Chris, a technical foul has been called here on KT Turner. Coach Turner frustrated without a foul call there on the drive by Williams after the steal. Thought Simmons had some contact. He or McLean won. Turner picks up the technical. I think they, they likely don't like McLean slicing in there. And again, it's, it's a move. It's a move to try to, to cause the layup to come from outside the block and a long ways away from the rim. ACU now 11 of 13 at the line and their largest lead of the afternoon. Conversation continues on that far sideline. The officials and Coach Turner. Yep. And a five second violation now on the Mavericks. That's UTA's sixth turnover within a four minute window. And you can see a late timeout request that wasn't granted, but a team that usually takes decent care of the basketball, a lot of mistakes. And again, time going off the clock and trips down the floor with no points, not even fouls, anything productive. McLean, left baseline. Works with Betty All, two on two. Leo, offensive foul call. Betty All working down in the paint for position. Gets called for the offensive foul. Yeah, I think that's, we, we, we've seen this all day. Uh, the little hook right there, a little bit of an arm wrap around Williams underneath. There's a huge size disadvantage for Williams and Betty all knowing that, but you don't have to be over assertive in your physical contact. Just hold your ground, call for the basketball and go to work a little bit too much in dominating on the mismatch. That's Leo's third, he'll go to the bench. Iggy Ahan is in, goes down to the floor to come up with the basketball, whistle, jump ball call. Wildcats tried to get the timeout, the possession timeout that the officials call a jump ball. Possession faces the Wildcats nonetheless. 
And again, if you're, you're following in rhythm of what we've been touching on, that's the seventh turnover within a five minute window for UTA. Just, we talked about in the first half, a little bit of a lack of rhythm and momentum, but it, it's almost come to a tipping point right now. Some frustration starting to boil over. JVC, trigger. Left the three short, Karoma the board. And a run out contested at the rim. Gaston Chapman. Chance to run and transition after the defensive rebound. Gordon a chance to air out some frustrations right there with that follow through, man. It, it's been a, a frustrating side of the floor for the Mavs to try to get points on. It's been tough. It's been one of those afternoons. Yehan his third, so a little foul trouble down on the inside for the Wildcats. Betty All and Iggy Ahon now both with three. Gaston Chapman the free throw. Did not play versus ACU a few months ago. I say months. Man, back in November. Crazy. Unique conference schedule, those two early conference games. And then step back out of conference for a month. But with a 20 game round robin schedule, had to get all 20 in. Off the rim, has his own rebound, a foul. Somebody had the left arm of Madden. I believe it's Vining. That's his third. And a little bit of a soft pressure by the Mavs coming off of the free throw make. ACU gets the ball from that end to this end on one dribble and two passes. Madden the three, right corner, front rim. Aston Chapman the board. Roma fouled on the drive. Uh, that's why breakdowns and, and trying to defensively set your feet where you can close out in this instance are so important. JB wanted to try to get out there and take away the three point shot. Picks up the foul. And Chris, you can feel the tension in the building, Correct. I think, for both teams. ACU has a chance to stretch this out to 20, but UTA is just two or three shots from being right back in this thing. And there's one of them Williams. He's got nine. Back to a 10-point game. Iggy Yehan just missed getting a piece of that. All the more impressive with how high that shot had to be to get past that tall reach of Aiden Iggy Yehan. Simmons attacks. Oh! Boy, Iggy Yehan almost had his fourth there. Gordon the basketball. Can the Mavericks put a run together? Still plenty of time, but can they do it consistently? There's two consecutive buckets. Gaston Chapman at the rim. And Iggy Ahan, a notable shot blocker, wanted to try to contest there. But as you mentioned, dealing with three fouls, that's good player IQ, knowing that he can't be as aggressive as he normally is to affect that shot. Back down to eight. JVC to drive. Wild shot. Officials let the players play through. And here come the Mavericks again, a 4-0 run. Vining to try to make it 7-0. Chapman another rebound. Williams at the bucket, contested by Simmons. Last touch by the Mavericks. Got a timeout on the floor. Still plenty to be decided in the last 12 minutes. Wildcats have got the eight point lead. Exactly 12 to go. We said it was a four nothing run by UTA. It's actually a six nothing run after the Wildcats had their largest lead of the afternoon at 14. UTA right back in this thing at eight. And again, Chris, we talked about it a moment ago. Just feels like there's some tension in the building. Is yeah. ACU trying to stretch this thing out? UTA continues to compress. A lot to decide in the last 12 minutes. Correct. And, and both teams know how, how vital the trips down the floor are, limiting turnovers, and knowing that you've got to hold serve and keep up with your opponent. Set play for Ali Deba out of the timeout. Rattles out. Wilson another rebound, closing in on another double-double. 10.7 rebounds. 
He has 10, still the only Maverick in double figures. Big time drive, whistle and a foul, and Williams will have a chance to get to double figures. So he'll go to the line and shoot two. We've seen a lot of these drives to the rim get let go, and I, I think a lot of things are going to change here down the stretch with the contact we've seen. You see this crew start to get a little bit more locked down in terms of what stuff gets let go and what gets uh, gets called underneath, because it's been a very physical game. The foul on Betty, all that's his fourth. Mm. With 11.35 left, he'll go to the bench. Iggy Ahan back in. Wildcats are playing Finn. In the paint today, Cam Steele is out with an illness. Second consecutive game that Steele has not been in uniform. It'll now be Iggy Ahan and Simmons inside tasked with having to battle with Wilson underneath where it's been Betty all most of today. Stat-wise, might not jump off the page at you, but he's done a great job of limiting Wilson. Seven on the shot clock. Simmons, McLean with three. Step back, shot fake, shot up. Mavericks have the rebound, down seven. Step through and a finish and a chance for an and one. Dejuan Gordon. And just out of position defense. Not going to see closeouts here. It's just, it's McLean trying to cover ground too much. Simmons trying to disrupt the ball before Gordon's able to collect and get to the rim. And a great job by UTA as a unit attacking an out of position defense and getting to the line. Williams got to double figures the last possession. Gordon a chance to do it here. Falls out. It's a 9-0 Maverick run, the closest they've been in well over 20 minutes of game time. ACU won for their last nine from the field. Madden will try to stop that. And he will. His third triple today, he's got 13. Put an asterisk by that shot. Chance for UTA to get within four. Yeah. Missed the free throw. Madden stretches it back out to eight. What just a well, that was back easy. down by Williams of McLean. Williams at 6-1, McLean at 5-9. Williams took advantage. Deep on a drive. Simmons the foul. Second chance opportunities and a finish. And again, a big swing. And forth we go as we go under 10. Another finish with the left hand. Gordon. And he's in double figures with 11. When we go through such a long drought where both teams trying to get shots to go down. And now we're in a, a mini window here of about two minutes where everything's going down. UTA's made five of their last seven. And doing it at the rim. We, we talked about their three-point shooting. It hasn't been three-point shooting today. It's been at the rim. Speaking of the rim, Arion Simmons on the putback. And it was a great drive by Dibba. Looked like he got to a spot where he could sneak a shot off and get it off the window. Missed his mark. That's where Simmons is, is so strong. He's already living down low and is able to scoop up the board and finish the job. Both teams at 39% from the field. They see a little bit better from three. They're six of 12. UTA is four of 17. <laughs> McLean rattles out, finding the board. McLean shot as a mid-range jumper, something off the ball fake, and to get to a better spot, he did that, just missed it. Bodies on the floor, whistle. Uh, I believe a jump ball call, and it is, and it stays with the Mavericks. Guys tangled up right now, trying to get him out of the pile. And doing a good job of that. It's a good nod to the officiating crew, just getting in there and, and trying to get guys untangled without things getting overheated. But watch Simmons here. Gets a hand on the ball and knocks it loose. And then now at this point, positioning, whatever. You see Wilson standing there, had the ball a moment ago. Now all of a sudden there's a scrum on the floor. That's Wilson wrapping around and quickly batting the basketball away from Wilson, or at least getting the hand on the ball and disrupting the flow. 
Williams works with McLean. Creates some space. Missed the shot. This time the foul call. We're in the bonus for both teams. We'll walk the floor and shoot free throws. It's, it's a long time in the bonus. While we walk the floor, let's shoot it over to Trey Newhouse. Trey, it's all yours, my friend. Thanks, Andy. Basketball is becoming much more of a global game, and that is put on full display on the court today. There are nine countries represented between these two North Texas teams. The development of college basketball recruiting process becoming more digital has helped players who are from other countries get attention from schools and basketball programs all across the country. This can be seen a worldwide love of basketball. Some examples of the international players for this ACU squad, Hunter Jack Madden from Australia, Ali Deba from Sweden, and Aidan Gihan from Ireland. Back to you guys. Thank you, Trey. Uh, international flavor all over the place. Recruiting is at an all-time high yeah. these days. It's going Worldwide, global. yes it has. Hey. JV Seaton can be caught with a hold of Karoma. Free throws now for the Mavericks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, coaches have their work cut out these days in recruiting. When you think about international, you think about the transfer portal, you think about conversations with NIL, constant, constant recruiting, yeah. not only of next year's squad, but, <laughs> well, part of next year's squad right. is this year's squad. Right. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, coaches always talk about, well, control what you can control. That's a long list of things that you got to be responsible for with where to attack and where to look for potential guys to come into your program down the line. And it's definitely grown in terms of that aspect. One for two for Karoma. It's a six point game. Has not been a one possession game for UTA. They've been right on the verge, but can't get there. And that this is what you can't have, is especially we were talking about both teams shooting free throws for eight and a half minutes. This will send KB on McLean to the line for the first time, but he picks up his dribble, and Russell is just simply on ball defending and gets a little bit over aggressive there, and now sends McLean, where hamstringed, picks the ball up, and he needs help. Now he's at the line shooting free throws. It's Russell's second foul. Williams picked up his fourth on that last possession, the foul of JBC. AC shot well from the line today, but they missed there, so they don't get the and one on the backside. It's a rare miss from McLean, 85%. Vining, too strong. McLean, the shortest guy on the floor, comes out with the basketball. Chance to run, deep in the trailer, who blocks? Wilson the block, and here come the Mavericks. Extra pass to Russell. It's a one possession game with eight minutes to go. We're talking about swings, how about that swing where it's an, at the time it's a six point game and a chance to make it eight. You miss the one and one and then a three on the other end. That's that's a heck of a swing. Just two for 11 for, from the field for Russell today, but that one a big one. Matt to try to answer. His fourth triple today. He's got 16. Gordon. Rattles out, Vining. Wilson on the inside, he's fouled. Free throws coming. 62-56, Hunter Jack, his fourth triple today. Coming down to the wire in Abilene. I always dreamed of doing something that would make a difference and so getting as much knowledge as possible was important to me. I love the fact that you can dream a new reality and then see it come true with hard work. Today, I know I'm making a difference, and a big part of seeing my dream come true was when I got my master's at ACU. Get your undergraduate or graduate degree online at Abilene Christian.
For years, I trained to be the best linebacker on the field. That drive made me a top performer at the NFL Combine, and I played five seasons in the NFL. Now I'm working toward another dream, building my own business, training athletes to help improve their performance. I want to be the best businessman I can, so I'm getting my MBA at ACU. Get your degree online at acu.edu. 62-56, UTA got within the one possession just a moment ago, but the two teams trade threes, and it's right back to a six-point spread. Right back to a, a ball game here, and points in the paint now favor the Mavs, where they had been trailing that number a majority of the game, outscoring the Wildcats from the bench department as well, and second chance opportunities. That's, that's what we've really looked at. 13-0 boards for the Mavs, so they continue to farm second chance looks. We just saw right before the break a third opportunity and a foul called so free throws coming and, and these are going to be the little things coming down to the stretch that are going to matter but we're keeping our eyes on too on Andy on uh, foul trouble as well uh, with that number continuing to grow no Leonardo Betty all but now back in the game dealing with foul trouble so a long seven minutes and change to go before zeros Betty all with four Williams has four for the Mavericks Wilson another double double. 10 points, 10 rebounds. His seventh one. He leads the whack in that category. Now with seven. 10 and 10, still 7-17 to go. ACU has led 31 of the 32 minutes today, but well, the Mavericks have been right on their heels. Just waiting for a window, waiting for the right time. And this is another as good as it's been opportunity for the Mavs where every time they've dwindled it close, we've seen a response from the home Wildcats. Betty all on the inside, double team comes. Simmons will drive with a seam. He's got 16. It's a great kick out from Betty all knowing that it just wasn't there. It's the matchup that the Mavs were expecting. Gets it out to Simmons and then screens away the inside the lane. Arion is 140th game in a Wildcat uniform today. 140. Mining leads it short. Russell steps on the baseline. Turnover 15. Watch Simmons here, how he steps out and takes the lane away. Right there, a little bit of a hip lean. But it's just the aggression and the size and the experience, too, that we've got, knowing with the hands up, it's going to likely skate away a foul call. McLean a breather, DeGruy to run the show. Let's see if Diva gets a touch in this set. Twelve on the clock. Alia drives. Fouled in the open floor. It is bonus situation. Ali Diva, who's nine for nine at the line, will shoot the one and one. It's the, it's the tough spot is with how physical this game's been. Every every whistle upsets the opponent because they, they've likely experienced the same at some point in this contest. So we're going to see, Andy, I think we're going to see a lot of free throw shooting here in the final six minutes and a little plus side of that. And who's going to be better? We, we've got UT Arlington today just shooting 63% from the strike and ACU at 77. 13 for 17. Deep has done the majority of the damage with that free throw now 10 for 10. Team leading 19 points. He has 19, Simmons 16, Madden 16. Williams 12, Gordon 11, Wilson 11. Russell knocking on the door, he has nine. One for two trip. Eight point game. Gordon, oh. a wild shot. Well contested by ACU. And a lot of, con I, almost certain there'd be some contact and some free throws there with ACU was a little out of position defensively and good on the maps for crashing. Bodies on the floor, whistle, I believe a timeout's granted. Hunter Jack Madden yeah. down to the floor to get possession. Arion Simmons calls for the timeout. Let's see another look at this one. 
Yeah, I think ACU upset thinking that at some point the ball was touched while a player was out of bounds, but from that angle, it's tough to see. The last thing you see is Betty all coming in and calling a timeout, and that's what they take. 5.46 left, ACU keeping the Mavericks at arm's length. Eight point spread down the stretch. Doctors and nurses are the foundation. 65, 57, 546 left. Chris, we've talked about this stretch of games for the Wildcats trying to hit the reset button and get back in the wax standings. They've got four in a row here on the home floor, starting with today. Yeah, and the teams that they've got coming into at Utah Tech, Southern Utah, opportunity to try to make up some crown in the standings. And, and again, it starts today. It starts with the present game, and that's the mindset that the Wildcats has, have to have is the opponents that come in here, we have to give them the best. We have to, that's got to be our best foot forward and our best opportunity to try to gain some ground and get back to the win column. Mavericks, a huge home game next Saturday. Is the best record in the country, Grand Canyon, comes to town. And then they're on the road for three straight. Yeah, and, and really impressed you with what, uh, how UTA plays at home. Eight and one this season at home. So this, in their eyes, was a game, an opportunity to get some things right, get some things down, you know, understanding they're gonna get cash back, hopefully out of percussion, uh, concussion protocol, a full week in terms of uh, time that they've got off to try to hit the reset button and go back home and continue the strong play that they play in Arlington. Boy, how about GCU at 17 and one? Best record in the country. Coach Drew has the Lokes playing something special. Diva three in the corner. Well strong, shot clock did not reset. Two on it. Diva gets it. And Brent Tanner, a double fist pump on the fire bar side line. He's fired up. I mean, that that, that's really, it's loud, a lot of things going on, and you likely don't expect your guy to know when he's got to get rid of it, and for the shot to go down nonetheless. Back to a 10-point game. Williams a drive, contact. DeGruy the foul. Used all 30 seconds this last shot clock. Second foul on DeGruy. McLean back in at the point. Drought from the field continuing for UTA where they've only made one of their last eight and no points on the board in the last two minutes. Williams 10th double figure game as he sits with 13. Six of the last seven have been a double figures. The freshman promising future ahead. Long Beach, California native. Two for two. And these are the games that you cut your teeth in the conference. This is a, an introduction to how tough it is to play on the road. And even the teams where you're looking down in the conference standings, you're going to get their best when they play at home. Diva drive. A finish. Ali Diva. He's got 23. Season high of 25. A career high of 25. 23 today. Now a diva foul, more free throws to come. Two outstretched arms and the opportunity to still hang that off the high part of the window. And seeing a little, little charisma, a little fight and grit out of Diva too after the make. Turned and looked like he gave Chapman a stare down. Keely Vining, who started strong, scored five early, then Plagued with foul trouble the rest of the first half. Free throw gives him 10. Fourth Maverick in double figures. They've had five in double figures each of their last two games. They've been 80 plus in their last three games. Does not look like they'll get there today, at least in regulation. But still a lot of basketball to go. Full court pressure from the Mavericks. Trouble. Oh, what a save on the far side, Williams. Inviting attacks. <laughs> Chapman fouled on the floor. Defense to offense on the turnover. What, what does not break this press here is taking your time. You, you break this press quickly and in sync. And 
and UTA's done a great job of keeping the full court pressure look in their back pocket, Andy, most of the game. We don't, we haven't really seen it a lot. In the times we have seen it, it's been effective a, a handful of times. So they pull it out there off of a make and catch the Wildcats off guard. Quick rotation again at the point guard spot. And the DeGruy for McLean. It looks like Kavion's trying to work out a tight quad or something, really trying to stretch it out on the far side. It's a rotation right now with no Ali Dibba on the floor for ACU, getting him a, a breath of fresh air and well rested for the final three and a half. 69-62. Simmons all the way there. Sometimes when that train's coming down the track, oh. you just best get out the way. And more free throws for the Mavericks. If that's on Betty all, his day has come to an end. I think he knows that it is. Betty all's fifth. His day comes to an end. Seven points. See the Simmons finish again, but Betty All's day now done. Seven points on three of seven shooting. It'll go on the shoulders of Aiden Igiehan down on the inside in the last 4.15. They've got size. ACU has been able to rotate that size well today. Aiden Igiehan still waiting for a shot to go down from the field on an 0 for 4 line, but Andy, what stands out to me is six rebounds, a steal, and an assist. So not getting points, but still able to, to be a threat out on the floor and contribute. Dejawan Gordon, two free throws. 0 for 4 now at the line for Gordon. The, the Mavs have been kept out of this game with the free throw misses that they've had. 17 of 26 as a team. Eight-point game. Simmons not the guy I anticipated to run the show, but he'll do it again. Coast to coast, he finishes. He wants it. We talk about the experience he's got, but there's no better feeling than winning. He's got 20. Gordon versus JVC. And a turnover into the hands of Simmons. But now it's a matter of ball control, taking care of the basketball, making free throws and getting out of here with a win. And trap will turn over back. Turnover number 14 on the Wildcats. 10 point spread as we go under our final timeout. 322 left in Abilene. Can the Wildcats finish it off? We shall see. Black basketball on ESPN Plus. Coliseum. Final stretch here in Abilene. ACU has stretched it back out to a 10-point lead. Mavericks got within three. A one-possession game. Hunter Jack Madden answered with a three to push it back to six. And it's arm's length with three and a half to go. And now an offensive foul on the Mavericks. A legal screen. Well, you and I, Andy, in the break are talking about what each team has to do to win the game. And if you're the Mavs, that's just a nightmare set out of a timeout, out of a full chance to talk about things. And you see the pass that's deflected by Russell, and that was going to go out of bounds if he doesn't chase it down. And then an offensive foul that sends it the other way. The clock is so important, and feels like they don't get back in this game without a three to go down. But they've really struggled in the second half. It's one for nine from behind the arc. Here's a steal, though. Gordon, two on two, into the paint. Three. Gordon a rebound. Second chance. Williams will take it. And he hits it. Second three of the half. They're two for ten from deep now. 
And what we talked about was for ACU is simply be efficient. If you can run a full 30 second shot clock and get a shot off and avoid turnovers, you're going to be in good shape to, to get back to the free throw line and keep making free throws and win the game. Maverick 6 of 25 from 3 after being so hot the last few games. Simmons contact, long pull. Free throws for the big man coming up. And uh, you know we we when are you when are you biting on the shot fake on someone that's got the size of Arion Simmons? But if you watch the rest of the game, you understand it. He's knocked those shots down, but also enjoys knowing that he's got you confused. A little ball fake and gets to the strike. Russell's fourth foul for the Mavericks. He has four. Williams has four. ACU 14 of 19 at the line. UTA 18 of 27. <laughs> 2 15 left and a foul here. I believe Iggy Ahan the foul. Hey, let's take a look behind the scenes. Here's the ones that are taking care of us. Hutton Harris, the ACU TV crew. I see a little Go 49ers in there today. I don't know about that. But great job, you guys, ACU TV. Thank you, Chris and I sound better, look better than what we really are. Appreciate you guys. Of course, you've seen Trey Newhouse, Daisy Stride, Matthew Dela Cruz, all part of our ACU TV broadcast. Simmons now four fouls, Diva four fouls. They changed one of the fouls that was on Iki Ahon. Looks like to Diva who has four. Ooh, almost got a turnover there on a little batted ball. It's gonna stay with the Wildcats. It's an important stretch here with 2-11. It's certainly not out of the question for the Mavs. Again, all you when you're looking at the difference, all they really need is a shot to go down and it's definitely manageable, but it's gonna have to start with some chaos. Man. And there's a turnover for an extra possession for the Mavericks. And we've seen ACU break the same look really easily, but what you can't do is pick your dribble up and you can't do it at that spot on the floor. Arion Simmons turned and looked to the front court and said, we need help to break that press. Gordon a three. Shooting woes continue. Williams, though, a second look. He'll take it. Falls out. Boy, the looks have been there. Both of those quality looks. Neither one falls. Get it in the hands of Dibba or Hunter Jack Madden, your, your much higher free throw percentage shooters, and run your offense out of these two guys. With Bining. Man. And the steal. Bining can't finish. Finding really frustrated. Wanted a foul call there, didn't get it. Now a chance to run more clock. Ten on the clock for Diva. Man, and Madden loses it and touches it last. But as we talk about, there's 20 seconds off the clock. What right now is at least a three possession game. We're down to a minute 10. ACU, four of their last four to go down from the field. The Mavs, that triple on the other end not long ago, one of just 10. Williams attacks. Simmons the rebound. Under a minute we go. McLean, not a bad free throw shooter either. Definitely your option. It's been a wire to wire, I say that. UTA scored first, ACU then took the lead and have led for 38 of the 39 minutes today. And it's a free throw shooting contest with 50 seconds left. I'm surprised with how long we've had each team in the bonus and we haven't seen more free throws, frankly, but it's just with how tough this game's been fought today and battled by both guys. We've seen a lot of, a lot of contact. 
Vining picks up his fourth. Two free throws for Hunter Jack Madden. 80% free throw shooter at the line. I've been impressed with Micaiah Williams. With, I know we've talked about 17 points for him, five of those coming from the strike, but as we've noted, a freshman, and that's good things coming. The Mavs program, and your leading scorer is able to, to be one of your newest faces in the program. Wilson a double-double, 11 points, 12 rebounds. Gordon a double-double, 12 points, 11 rebounds. But it looks like it's going to be just a bit short as we'll walk the floor and Simmons will shoot two. Arion Simmons decided that ACU wasn't going to lose this game. And, and the play that he's got, and he, he's the type of guy when you play him, he drives you nuts. But when he's the guy that's driving your offense, it's the heart and the hustle that continues to, to put ACU in winning opportunities, or at least in games like this where he's got 21. 50% from the field today in 10 boards. Chris, this is big for Wildcats. 12, <laughs> correct. It, it, it's just to put it in perspective, it's what we've been talking about. You see the conference record at the bottom of the screen at one and five, and the, the tail of the tape is always in conference play to just disregard records, and it's for this reason exactly. It's a team that was hungry for a win and a really good opponent coming in, and they did a great job battling the bigs inside today. Ooh. Man. Turned angle there for Williams. Uh, Shot clock is off. The officials will go ahead and stop play as Williams is down on the far end. UTA will remain winless on the road. Now 0-9 away from Arlington. Big one for the Mavericks next Saturday at home versus Grand Canyon. And UTA had the lead versus the Lotus in Phoenix with less than a minute to go. Grand Canyon found a way to sneak out with a win. UTA will get their opportunity at home next Saturday. And they're going to be coming in with plenty of uh, plenty of vinegar in their guts with how this one goes and knowing that they've got an opportunity at home. We've noticed, or we've noted that with the Mavs being 8-1 inside their barn this year, they're going to be giving Grand Canyon their best effort to try to give the Lopes that one in the loss column that's been so elusive. Gordon fouled by McLean. A lot of upside for KT Turner. It's a Maverick program that won 11 games last year, 11 games two years ago. They're ahead of pace of the 11 this year. It's his first head coaching opportunity, and it's just, you know, sometimes there's always those question marks about guys that have never been in the head chair. It's just different, but they know what goes into a winning staff. And he said in the WAC podcast this week with Kendra Sheehan, being a head coach is all about patience. So patience for he and the staff, patience for the, the Maverick fan base. There's big days ahead in Arlington. Yeah. Same here for Brett Tanner and company in the Wildcats. Four game home stretch that starts with a win today. Definitely a nice feather in the cap with a team when you can take down UTA with how well they've played lately. And this is exactly what BT was hoping for. He gets a good draw from the students, a good draw from the fans, and a great effort from his from his team to be able to take down a, an above 500 conference play team. Debo will finish with 23 today. Simmons as well. And the Wildcats snap their three-game losing streak. Your final score, 78-67. Wildcats are 7-11, and 2-5 and in Western Athletic Conference play. UTA drops to 9-10, and 4-4 four and four overall on the season. And again, it was it was ACU that took an early lead that stretched it out to double dig di digits early, up to 13. And UTA only got within one possession one time. It was midway through the second half. ACU responds with a Hunter Jack Madden three-point shot. And it was never more than
than a one possession game one time the yeah. entire last 38 minutes. I, I think that's a great takeaway from this Wildcat team where they were able to just weather a lot of the storm. We saw surges from the Mavs where they've just continuously kept their foot on the pedal, trying to get back in this game. And it's a good lesson where you, you simply can't afford to take any down dips in a 40 minute game when you've got a team like UTA, they're on the road and they really tried, but it was ACU at home, just a little bit of the edge and they, they played cleaner and they had more help from more guys where it felt like today. Uh, Ali Diva, 23 points. Ariane Simmons, 23 points. Hunter Jack Madden on four of six from three at 18 points today. Four Mavericks do get into double figures. They're led by Makai Williams, who had 17. 13 today for Dejawan Gordon, 11 for Akili Vining, also 11 points today for Shamar Wilson. A double, another double double is seventh of the year, but uh, again, the Wildcats at 78 67 to uh, continue to get the win as uh, ACU shoots 43% on the day, 26 of 60. UTA 32% today, and really the, the tail of the tape for them, a team that had been red hot from behind yeah. the three, just six of 27 today. Yeah, and that, that element of their game never arrived. They never had that opportunity where they were able to get some threes to come down in rhythm, and it simply just have, didn't happen. And what, what stands out to me is no field goals the final 310. 23 points for Marion Simmons. He's upstairs with Daisy Shrine to give us his feel of the game. Daisy, take it away. Thank you, Andy. I'm here with our player of the game, Arian Simmons. Arian, this is a team that you lost to back in November, so you started aggressive. What was the strategy behind that? Uh, Coach told us just to play free and play hard and play for each other, and that's what we did today. So this is a really big win. You beat the number four seed in the Western Athletic Conference. What does that mean for you moving forward? Uh, tell the team, uh, don't get comfortable. Uh, we still got a couple wins to, uh, to get in the top seed, so just keep playing hard and just and follow each other. Great, well thank you so much, Arian. Congratulations on the win. Andy, back to you. The Wildcats get the win, 78 to 67. Hey, this has been a presentation of the Western Athletic Conference on ESPN. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. Until next time, for the entire crew, Chris Jarrett, Trey Newhouse, Daisy Strine, Matthew De La Garza, and the whole crew led by Hutton Harris. I'm Andy Penny saying so long, take care. Good night from Abilene, Texas.